We are imputing to him things that he does not want to do in our usual effort to demonize him and his country. So when you say stay out of it, you mean no sanctions, no military aid, just let Russia take the portion of Ukraine they want to take? Yes, absolutely. I, I see no reason why we should fight with the Russians over something that they have been talking about for years. We simply chose to ignore it. We chose to ignore it. Jennifer Griffin then steps in and says this in response right after. Before we get started, I just heard your last guess and I feel like I need to correct some of the things that Colonel Doug McGregor just said because, and I'm not sure 10 minutes is enough time to do so because there were so many distortions in what he just said and talking about the West and NATO vilifying Putin and sounding like an apologist for Putin and talking about how Putin, he thinks he knows how far Putin wants to go. I don't think anyone that I've spoken to here at the Pentagon or elsewhere in Western intelligence believes they know how far Putin wants to go. And Vladimir Putin is a former KGB agent. He's been laying the groundwork for this. And the kind of appeasement talk that Colonel Doug McGregor, who should know better, because when he was in government, he was the one who was advising President Trump to pull all US troops out of Germany. That kind of projection of withdrawal and weakness is what made Putin think that he could actually move into a sovereign country like Ukraine, Trey. She's like, Trey, take it from here. Now, Trey, uh, Trey Gotti went on to agree with her, even though he didn't push back on the previous guest. Uh, he's like, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I don't know why he did it. I don't know why he did that. So I'm not sure really what Trey Gotti believes. But anyway, it goes uh, first up, body build, blood build, uppercut, cross. There goes this guy. Next up is Donald Bulldog. He went also on Fox as well to talk about how we're not supplying uh, military troops in combat, enough help to Ukraine so they can uh, increase this war. He said, let's check out this quote here. He was asked specifically what kind of assistance America ought to provide to Ukraine. And he said, we have indirect uh, fires, we have direct capabilities and so does NATO. We have to get more stuff in there and we have to get more combat help in there. So increasing the war, which some people are very much like, uh, I don't know if we should do that right now. Um, so. One of those people could have been Jennifer Griffin. She then stepped on and said this about Jennifer Bulldog. But I have to respond to something your previous guest, Brigadier General Balduck, said because he really was way mm -hmm. off the mark in terms of talking about what the U.S. could do on the ground. Putin has nuclear weapons. That is why the U.S. military and NATO do not have troops on the ground inside Ukraine. The Ukrainians are very good fighters. They have been, it's a totally different military than it was in 2014. They do not need Americans to fight for them because that would then cause this to to uh, to yeah. spread and and clearly Brigadier General Baldock is not a student of history. He's a politician. He ran for Senate in New Hampshire and failed. He is not a military strategist. And to suggest that the U.S. would put indirect fires or special operations or CIA on the ground to uh, to call, to give Putin any sort of excuse to broaden this conflict is extremely dangerous talk at a time like this. Wow. How much longer do you think she's going to last on Fox News? <laughs> oh my God, preach. It's just amazing to have someone who has that amount of like nuance and analysis and understanding, basically like pushing back against the Putin worship on one hand, but then also pushing back against the like crazy drive for war on the other, which again, Fox News and the right is holding at the same exact time as if it's like, no, Biden needs to go harder. No, we need to love Putin harder. Um, I love her. That's amazing. I, I mean, Fox News viewers who tuned in were like, oh, "What?" They learned a little bit. Well, I'll give you a few quotes from some Fox News viewers because, as you can imagine, it was a little bit of "What?" and a lot more of a "How dare she?" <laughs> Let's check out this first tweet here. You've got a lot of nerve going after the military men on Fox. Ooh. Why don't you go over to CNN with their leftist crap? Because there's no men over there. Also, she said. Tweeting right at Jen Griffin, you seem to think that you have monopoly on truth. <laughs> I don't want you to decide what uh, decide for me what's true. Hmm. Fox presents both sides when then we decide. You are condescending and rude. Cram it, Jennifer. Trump is right. Okay, so that was an original thought as well, I guess. And also, there's some good old fashioned. How dare you? We talk, we saw about the military men that she's attacking. That's a problem. Now, um, her whole. Uh, 
feminism is an issue. Let's watch, let's look at this uh, this next tweet here from someone else. Notice how Fox has to get the hysterical Jennifer Griffin on air to insult any guest who dares suggest we stay out of a new war in Europe. How dare she? <laughs> I wasn't even gonna bring up her gender, but of course Fox News viewers did. But it was kind of dope to see a woman being and a national like security correspondent and analyst be the one to put these generals in their place and also call out, look, this is a politician and a general. When politicians and generals come on, they have ulterior motives, whether they be, you know, like weapons contractors who are paying them on the low low or on the high low <laughs> and or running for office. So she's not either of those things. She's trying to actually give it to you straight. And you know, this is what you'll see when your reporters actually go and have to report or she works in close with folks and what they're actually doing on the ground and not in the studio, getting the talking points together. When you see the realities and maybe she has her views and her opinions, which she might, I don't know. But those if those things don't match up, how do you separate the reality from just what you would like for it to be? And then you have to report about it and you see someone wildly say something completely inaccurate. It's kind of hard to go, yeah, so I'm gonna build off of that. It's just. Yeah. It, it won't feel right, and the yeah. same thing happened with Harris Faulkner. You know, and it's it's why you can't always just pundit from the table. It's that's why you bring in an expert and be like, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's okay to say that, yes. and move on. It's just, it's it's simple.